For part two of lesson one, we're going to focus on the area of sectors in a circle. We've already explored a little bit of arcs, their measures, how we use the measure of the arc to find the length of the, of the arc. But we're going to apply that same thinking and some of those key concepts and ideas to the area of sectors. And in order to do that, we are going to review a little bit about area, and then we're going to define what a sector is. So again, area is found using the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. We're still going to work in terms of pi like we did last time. So basically, in your calculator, you're going to type r squared, and you have that many pi. All right. Sometimes it's a fraction, sometimes it's a decimal. We're going to change those decimals into fractions and have a fraction of pi. And, uh, and that might be a little bit agonizing for those of us that maybe struggle with the fractions, but hopefully our handy dandy calculators will do that work with the fractions for us if we are wrestling with that. But we're gonna work in terms of pi, just like we work in terms of x or work in simple tropical form or all those other awesome ideas. Find the area of a circle with this radius. The area of this circle is pi times the radius squared, write down the formula so that you know it, is equal to pi times five squared, which is pi times 25. But what we're going to do is we're going to write that as 25 in front of the pi as it's a coefficient of this variable, this symbol representing this number, this quantity. And then this units are squared. So centimeters will be squared. I want for you to do this one. That shouldn't be a try, it should be a you do at this point, especially if we did part one very well with the in terms of pi. If it's wrong, it's not a problem, we'll fix it in class. But it's good to try it, that way if you did it incorrectly, we can get some feedback on what I need to do differently or better, or what you need to do differently or better. All right, now sectors. Um, obviously, there's, this is a, a very wordy slide, but there's important information here, so I wanna make sure that you have that. A sector of a circle is, is, is bounded by an arc and two radii. It's like a slice of pizza or a slice of pie, if you don't like pizza. Um, if you don't like pie or pizza, I'm not sure a good analogy to help you out with. But, uh, but what we have here is a, this, this, this sector is called AOB. We trace it out like we would name the angle. Angle AOB is that central angle. The sector we would also name as AOB. All right? We put the center of the circle as the middle letter when we are naming it. All right? Summarize that if you need to, otherwise verbatim there. The, the sector there, you can tell in this particular example, is bounded by these two radii, OA and OB. And then, of course, this arc, AB. The area of this sector is a fraction of the total area of the circle that is part of, it's corresponding to the measure of this arc, right? This fraction of 360 multiplied by the area is going to give you that fraction of the area. So the same principle that we used for arc length, we're going to apply to the area of sectors. So this first part should be a breeze, especially if last time went well and the work that we did with part one went well. If last time didn't go well, this is another opportunity to, to learn and to grow in our understanding of how to apply the arc's measure to either the arc's length or the sector's area, all right? And so in this case, let's find the area of this sector, Z-O-M or M-O-Z, and let's find the area of this sector, A-C-B or B-C-A. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to find the area um, of the circle and then multiply it by this fraction, this, this 72 divided by 360. So here we are going to have 72 over 360 times pi times our radius squared. And so we want to make sure that we do a very good job of understanding a few things here. First of all, that 72 over 360 is one-fifth. All right, it's one-fifth. Now, you don't have to simplify that fraction, but if we know that it's one-fifth, that might be useful. And 20 squared, we know, is 400. Well, one-fifth of 400 is 80. All right, and if we are thinking about what's happening computationally, we can sort of ignore the fact that pi is here, and we can type this times that in our calculator, and it will spit out the, um, the answer for us. Now, if we want to show what that would look like in the calculator, I would type 72 divided by 360 and then multiply that by the radius squared. And so this is what my calculator looks like, and that's what yours could or should look like. 72 divided by 360 multiplied by 20 squared. It's going to give me the output of 80, all right? And I don't want to use the pi button there because I don't want to approximate this. I want to know it in terms of pi. So we're going to find the area of that sector is 80 pi. If I were to type that with the pi included, whoops, let's clear that out. 
72 divided by 360 times pi times 20 squared. It would give us that same decimal, but I don't, I don't care about the decimal. Let's divide out that pi and see that that's 80 pi. Sorry for the camera freaking out on you guys there. All right, now I would like for you to try. And you're just trying it, but you should be able to put the numbers into the formula. And if not, then let me know what I need to do differently or better. What questions do you have on trying example 1b or whatever? Again, you don't have to simplify the fraction, but you do have to write it and then let your calculator do that computation for you. All right, put a little asterisk by this part for the segment of a circle. This is not necessarily a complicated idea, but it might get complicated mathematically. All right, we're going to be finding the area of triangles. We're going to be using one half base times height to kind of explore that. We are going to be using simplest radical form. Um, and so this is maybe going to rattle some cages, especially if you have a weakness when it comes to your 30, 60, 90, your 45, 45, 90, simplest radical form. That stuff might get in the way of you doing this work well. So the segment of a circle is just part of a circle that's bounded by what we're going to call a chord and an arc. All right. So here is the arc and its endpoints. The endpoints of the arc are a segment, make a segment that cuts off what's called the segment of a circle. But in reality, this segment is formed by having a sector minus a triangle, and the part that's left is the segment. So if we find this area and we subtract that area, then we are left with the segment. This is the principle that we're going to be exploring. This requires that we know how to do this really well, right? which we're just learning. right? So hopefully it's not too big of a stretch, especially based on the work last time. But it requires that we know how to find the area of this triangle well. And that might be harder in some cases than we would like it to be, all right? Because it's not you know, the fifth grade version of finding the area of a circle, it's the high school version, right? This is the geometry second semester getting ready for algebra two work, finding the area of that triangle. And so this might be more challenging than it needs to be, depending on how well we do with some of our special right triangles or some of our other work. So I want to explain two things, and I'm going to do both of these for us. If I want to find the area of this segment, then that means I need to find the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle to get the area of the segment. All right, so I'm going to take the area of the sector, AOB, and I'm going to find the, subtract the area of the triangle, AOB, to find the area of the segment, AB. It's kind of a weird notation and all that, and, and so we're just going to try to generalize this and make this as easy as possible. The area of the sector, we know already, is going to be found by taking the arc length over 360 times pi times the radius squared. The area of the triangle is, again, a one-half base times height of the triangle. But we have to figure out what's going on with this triangle to get the area that we are looking for, the area of our segment. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, this is a right angle. This is 90 degrees, which means that this whole arc is also 90 degrees. So I've got 90 over 360, and I'm going to multiply that by pi times our radius. We're given our radius is 10 squared. All right? For the triangle part, let's hold tight for just a second. So this is going to give me 1 fourth of 100, which is 25. Now the area of this triangle, this is a right triangle. And so base times height, what is the height here? If I know that this is the base, what is the height of that triangle? Well, folks, this is a, um, a right triangle, and these radii are the same. This is actually a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this. 10 is the same as the height. This radius is the same as this radius. So the base and the height are the same. So I have 1 half of base times height, which means whoops, that I have half of 100, which is 50. I've got this many square inches. I've got this many square inches. The notation here of putting that whole thing in parentheses and then putting square inches is going to be important for this difference here. Now, one question you might have is, ooh, isn't that going to give me a negative number? And the answer is no. This number is bigger than 75, right? Because pi is bigger than 3. So 25 times 3 and more is going to be 75 and more. All right, but then we're taking 75 or so and we're subtracting 50. So this is not a negative quantity. It's not 25 pi minus 50 is negative 25 pi. That's not true because this is pi. This does not have pi. These are not like terms. I can't subtract them. This is the answer in square units.
all right? So we want to make sure that we can find the area of the sector, the area of the triangle, and then write it as a difference and our square units, all right? Now, this part might be confusing. If, any, if this part is confusing, then I need to know. If this part is confusing, I need to know. If this part is confusing, I need to know. If this part is confusing, I need to know. If this part is confusing, I get it. But if you have this number and you have that number, then that, if, if this makes sense and that makes sense, then hopefully this does. If we want to explain that more, please ask in the seminar, in email, or in class. And now this one's tough because here I don't have a base and a height. So this one gets a little bit messy. When I find the area of the segment is found by taking the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle, I have obviously some work to do. So the area is going to be found by taking our 120 degrees is the whole arc there. So 120 over 360 times pi times the radius of 24 squared minus the area of our triangle, which is 1 half times base times height. All right, I'm going to leave that blank for now because there's going to be conversation involved there. All right, so this is going to be one third of 576. Uh, and so times, so, so 120 divided by 360 times 24 squared is going to give me 192 pi. All right, that's what this first part is. For the area of our triangle, we have to recognize what's happening here. And this is maybe a tough part in our thinking, but when I have this 120 degree angle, if I want to cut that triangle in half, right, we've got 24 and 24. If I cut that triangle in half, I now have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so we're going to have to apply our 30, 60, 90 rules from last unit. Reminder, if you do not know those, in our 30, 60, 90 triangle, our hypotenuse is the short leg times 2, and our long leg is equal to the short leg times the square root of 3. So if this is 24, then that means that this piece right here is 12. This distance right there is 12. That's going to be the height of my triangle. The base of the triangle is this piece and that piece together. Well, this is 12 square roots of 3, taking the short leg times the square root of 3, and this is also 12 square roots of 3. So when I put those together, I get a total of 24 square roots of 3. All right? Now, if you're having trouble with this, make a note for yourself that you can ask that question. But what we have now is 1 half of 24 is 12. 12 times 12 is 144. 144 times the square root of 3. Now, this has a pi and this has a radical. Can I combine them? No, I cannot. I've got that many square feet. Okay? Find the area of the sector. Find the area of the triangle. Subtract them. Even if you can't combine, you still are going to write subtract. And that is our area of our segment. All right, that blue shaded region. That is going to be maybe a little bit challenging for folks if you do not know your 30, 60, 90. If you do not know how to multiply these, that obviously is an Algebra 1 arithmetic from, from uh, Chapter 11. We can still practice that as much as you need to. But on the whole here, we should recognize that we've got some pies and some radicals. Those can't combine. I've got some pies and no pies. I can't combine them. They are not like terms. Let me know what questions, if any, you have. Hopefully, after working through these examples, you get the idea of how to find the area of a sector, of a segment, of a triangle. Let me know what questions, if any, you have.